Running is a sport for all, although there are still some barriers that need to be addressed. As a woman, I feel there are certain things that require a little bit more thought and research in order to make running as enjoyable as it should be. Now, from my own personal experience and also from listening to you guys out there, there are several topics that I want to cover today. And I'm going to be looking at how to solve chafing, finding clothes that fit, stay in place and keep us cool whilst we're running, as well as addressing the challenges with running with a heart rate monitor. Chafing seems to be one of the issues that's running through the majority of the questions and that ranges from sports bras through to shorts and heart rate monitors. And sadly, once something starts to rub, it's only going to get worse and there is only so much that our friend lubrication can do. So rather than try and cover all the topics at once, they're going to break it down and look at each area, investigating the best type of fit, style and fabric that's available. But before we go any further, I want to just a quick disclaimer to say that we are human beings, we're all different, we've got different body shapes and we've got different demands from our running kit. So with that in mind, I'm going to be sharing my personal running experiences because sadly I have had problems finding sports bras, shorts and heart rate monitors that don't rub me, but also sharing some of the information I found from the research. So this video isn't going to tell you what ideal piece of kit you need to go out to buy, but hopefully it's going to give you enough information that you'll be able to go out and decide what will work best for you. What are the ideal pair of shorts? That is the million dollar question and there are so many options. You've got the short, baggy, old school type of shorts. You've got the longer, tighter cycling type. You've got the double layered shorts or you've even got a longer, looser basketball style of short. Now, it does seem that many of you who've got issues with finding the right pair of shorts aren't keen on the old school baggy style as they just don't tend to stay in place. And if you've got thighs that are anything more than sticks, they tend to just ride up as you're wearing them unless you're doing just a gentle walk in a mild climate. They're not going to stay in place. Yes, they do look great, but if they're not comfortable, there's no point in going there. So when the two-in-one short became popular, I thought, brilliant, it's going to solve all issues. It's going to have a short that stays in place and reduces chafing, and they're going to look great at the same time. But there is a bit of a key when it comes to finding a two-in-one short that works, because that under layer, that tight sort of cycling layer underneath, is the key to getting the right fit. Because if it's too loose, then it's not going to stay in place. If it's too tight, it's going to dig in and feel uncomfortable, or just move further up. Any Anyway, so if you go for maybe one that's got a slightly longer inner leg, then you've got more chance of it staying in place and being comfortable. Well, what about the tight-fitting Lycra style of shorts? Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's what I used to run in when I was a kid. I had my favourite pair of shiny black cycling shorts with a big pink stripe down the side. And as a result of that, it's taken me a little while to accept that these shorts are actually rather good to run in at the moment. And the great news is they are 100% back in fashion. And in my mind, they are the answer to all your chafing woes. I've run an ultra marathon in a pair and had no issues at all. But it is the fit that is key, and it's finding the correct length of short that's going to suit you because like I mentioned in the two-in-one shorts if it's too short then you're probably still going to get some sort of chafing or they might end up rolling up to the top of your thigh and if they're too long maybe you just don't like that length so it's finding the correct length for you that's going to stay in place and also the correct tightness as you probably don't want something that's going to be really gripping at the bottom that said a few of you did recommend and some have said they're looking for shorts that have the silicone bit at the bottom like you get in triathlon shorts and some cycling shorts personally I'm not a fan of that because I do find it's not that comfortable and if you find the right right pair they should stay in place anyway but that is a solution for some of you and then it's finding a pair of shorts that have the correct thigh to waist ratio and that's somewhere where I struggle sometimes if you've got something that fits correctly on the thigh you can find it's a bit too loose or too tight around the waist so again another option is finding shorts that have got the extra draw cord inside isn't always the comfiest option but it should at least help with the fit if you're a fan of the feel and the comfort of the Lycra short but you don't want that look, then you can simply go for a pair of shorts like that and find a very thin single layer baggy short to wear over the top. I mean, you see men doing it with compression shorts underneath their rugby or football shorts, for example, so there's nothing to stop us. And another type of short that is less common but synonymous with the champion ultra runner Courtney Dullwater is the long baggy short. I have to admit, I've never tried them myself, but she runs hundreds and hundreds of miles in hers and doesn't even change a pair throughout an ultra race. 
race. So that could be another option for you. Finally, you've got the extension of the running short. And by that, I mean quite literally, you've got the three quarter or Capri style of legging, which finished just below the knee. And I've never had a pair that ride up and are normally really comfy. And they're going to be cooler than wearing a full length legging. And before we move on, we've talked about shorts, but whilst we're on the topic of what to wear under or below your waist, we need to cover underwear because there's no point in spending lots of money on great fabrics for your shorts if you don't have some underwear that's going to make sure you've got no chafing there and is also sweat wicking. So it's worth investing in something running specific for that too. This is a huge topic and one that I feel needs expert advice for more detail. So today I'm just gonna brush over the options that are out there and finding the correct sports bra is essential to your enjoyment and comfort when running, but also to the health of your breast tissue. And it really saddens me that a lot of women are put off running purely because they can't find a sports bra that's comfortable or works for them. Now, sports bras tend to be divided into two kind of overall categories. You've got the crop top style, which you put on over your head and basically works by squishing your boobs, holding them close to your chest so that that reduces the movement you get there. That's only really useful up to a size B or C cup. And beyond that, you want a more sculpted bra type of fit that's going to give your boobs the support that they need. And when it comes to fit, that is entirely personal and you're going to have to go and try on lots of sports bras. Yes, I know it's not fun, but I would recommend it's worth the time investing to find the right comfort for you. And if you can go to a large department store that's got a big sports specific department, and you can try on lots of different styles or a running shop and make sure that you do the jumping up and down test in the changing rooms. Yep, you're going to be running and you're outside. So you need to make sure that it gives you that support and comfort when you're at least indoors. But if you're like me and you hate that sort of claustrophobic feeling of changing rooms, especially when you're having to put bras on and off, why not use the option of online shopping when you can order a few different sizes, try them on in the comfort of your own home and work out what's going to be best for you that way. A few points to be aware of with sports bras though and areas for rubbing could be where there's fastening. So if you've got a fastening on the back, I've had that rub me in the past to make sure there's enough overlap of the fabric and make sure it's got enough thickness to it as well. The same goes if you've got a fastening at the front, lots of sports bras now have zips, which are great, but again, they can dig in sort of in the sternum area if you're not careful. And beyond the obvious, you want to look at the actual band that goes around your chest as well. Cause sometimes if that's got quite a sharp finish to it, that can dig in depending on on the shape you are or how it fits. And also you might want to consider the shape of the sports bra with what you might be wanting to wear it under if you don't want it showing. And the, sh the shoulder straps as well are something to bear in mind because the wider they are, the more they're gonna spread the load so they'll be more comfortable on your shoulders. And then you've got the heart rate chest strap to add into the mix, which is just going to make finding the correct sports bra fit with that combination another challenge in itself. Thankfully, chest straps have changed and become more comfortable, so they're not as rigid as they used to be, but they are still the most accurate way of measuring your heart rate because they take the ECG directly from your heart. Now, years ago, I used to actually have a sports bra that had slots built in that you could simply slot your chest strap into and it would stay in place, but chest straps have come forward since then and they're no longer that really rigid material which is good so they are supposed to be more comfortable but sadly they do still have quite a sharp edge and ideally to wear them correctly you want to pretty much have them where your bra strap goes that doesn't work when you're wearing a sports top i did with my research find a few bras that had sort of those strips built in and you just attach the sort of monitor part of the heart rate to the front of it but that's going to very much limit you as to what sports bra you could choose but there is another great alternative that for some people works perfectly. It's the optical heart rate. So you might have probably seen watches that will take your heart rate just from measuring it on your wrist. This isn't as accurate because it's purely just taking your pulse from the change in pressure of your blood. But for a more accurate option, you can use an optical heart rate sensor that can be worn on your arm or even your leg. If you don't want it on your upper arm because you're afraid that's going to chafe, you can wear it on your forearm. But again, check for the accuracy of that one. And also if you're wearing your chest strap in a slightly different place check that you're still getting an accurate reading
I've covered three of the major issues that we as women face when running, which I feel is enough for today because it's quite a large topic already. And I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I have been running for pretty much all of my life. So I've had various experiences with different pieces of kit and I'm still learning as our bodies change and also our demands from our kit change. You might find that something that was really comfortable for you when you were training for a 5K no longer works when you're training for a half marathon or a marathon, for example. So it's very much a fluid topic and it's a conversation that I want to keep going so if you've had any great experiences with finding a solution to a problem you had with clothing please share it in the comments section below and also share this video with your friends and I know today I've only brushed over the topic of sports bras and I feel like that could be a video in itself so if you want to know more on that I'll go and do some research let me know again in the comments give us a like if you've enjoyed this video and you can follow us on social media as well as subscribing to us here on YouTube.